and welcome back to coverage of the 2023 European Open, a prestigious and exciting event bringing the best players from around the world together here in Tampere, Finland at Nokia Disc Golf Park on the Beast. This is Round 3 Front 9 MPO Chase Card Coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me, Elias Lukanen. What is up, Connor? What is up, viewers? Nice to be here once again. Looking at this moving day coverage, it's time to make your positions for the final round four. Looking at the card here, we got Corey Ellis, very solid player from the US, has pretty much everything about this game in check. That's really what this course needs, there's a lot of different holes. Joining Corey, we have Ezra Aderhold, known for his big distance off the tee, good on both the backhand and the forehand and has a very good step putt really capable of shooting a super hot round when he's on and talking about capable calvin heimberg one of the best line hitters in the sport you see that rating it's one of the highest in the world for a good reason we saw him a little bit off last weekend with the putter but if he can uh, fire up that putter he will really play incredible rounds and rounding out our card we have Vino Mekkela sponsored by Prodigy Disc really well-rounded player has all the skills in the world and I'm sure a ton of experience on this course maybe feeling the love from the Finnish home crowd as well starting it off on hole one become a legendary starting hole on this track it's pretty short, it's only 98 meters and even playing slightly downhill you have that triple mando banner at the start that is pretty much unmissable. More missable gap is this late gap that we flew through. You have to throw something straight to slightly hyzering through that gap. Hopefully have good speed control because this green is slightly sloping away after the basket. So many people would like to be in circle one here. And uh, if you're not, you're probably a little bit disappointed. We have Corey up first, getting the hyzer flip. Not quite up to flat, and as a result, catches an early tree, fades out. But a beautiful kick and a great slide up to the basket. Really nice starting throw, despite uh, an unintended line. Very good result. Yeah, it's, for some reason it's very common that people hit some of those left side trees, as Ezra is doing also. And he's also gotten through, but not near as good of a result as Corey. Calvin just barely gets around. That's a perfect shape. You see the roll up to the bullseye. That's how you want to start off your round. It's one of the easier holes on the course and uh, especially these guys on the chase card trying to make a move for that lead card. Definitely need to get this hole in this situation. Vino getting his round three started here. Looks like a great speed and line. Oh, just perfection. If you thought Calvin's was CTP, Vino sneaks his way in as well to just under the cage. Both of them will be left with tap-in birdies. Great execution from a early start for the card. And Ezra doing what most do if they are not inside a reasonable putting distance looking towards the downhill and lays it up. Corey, however, putting that one in. Nice starting birdie there from Corey, and even some of those 5 meter putts on this first hole can be pretty tricky, you know, you got the big crowd, the crowd isn't the biggest on this hole, but rumors said that there was over 3000 people watching the event live on site on this moving day Saturday, and uh, probably gonna be even more for the Sunday, so a lot of people interested in the sport here in the Tampere area. As we move on to hole two, another one of the holes you would like to pick up. 
This time much more difficult though than the whole one. Plays really well for a forehand, you see the OB on the left side. And these late low branches that you have to avoid. People really have to choose whether they want to go with the wide forehand around them or a low forehand under. Some people even going for a backhand turnover or a backhand roller is also a common play. And Corey is known for his incredible backhand touch, especially on the standstills, but we see him going to his forehand here. And with an unfortunate roll of the wrist, came out very nose down on Anheuser and just grounds it early. We'll see Calvin look to make the correction and there's that low driven sh option that you mentioned, Elias. Looking for the skip as well, that's common play on this hole. Big skips to be had with that low forehand, and Calvin takes a decent skip, doesn't quite get it pushing forward, but he's on the edge of the circle there. Looks like Vaino is going for the roller. Does shape nicely, however, there is OB on the right side, curling up just in time before the spectators lighting the OB. Ezra going to be shaping this forehand as well. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him give this one a little bit more height than the others. Yeah, Ezra also has got some good forehand power. Bit of an unorthodox form, I feel like. Looks like he's using a lot of the arm on the forehand. But gets a good result well in the circle there. Kind of pushing that left side OB line. But he will have a putt from there. Corey going back to the forehand now again on his second shot and what an adjustment he's made. Great shot up into the bullseye that will secure his par here. No damage done despite a very early grounding of his tee shot. He gets the adjustment. So you see this stunning overhead shot. Yeah, I think Corey might have almost been a little bit lucky that his release off the tee was so errant because if it was just a little bit higher he would have definitely gone OB. Let's see Vaina here from inner edge of circle Ooh. two. What a putt there. Catches the left side. You see that powerful spinny stroke that Vaina is known for. Yeah, really effective. It's a classic look. You could tell Vaino's putt just from his silhouette. Calvin as well, another player with a very distinctive putting style. Uses a pendulum-like arm motion, gets a good pop and spin on a flat release putt. Calvin for his birdie. Just a bit low off the cage, but on a solid line. We'll see Ezra, how much he's pinched. Yeah, I think Ezra will. The trees will be looking for, to straddle. Uh, some of those branches he's dealing with are actually extremely thick, so he needs to be needs to avoid hitting them at all. Let's see. It's not a long distance here; only about seven or eight meters left. And he misses it as well. That is pretty surprising there from both Ezra and Calvin. But as as uh, as we mentioned before. Calvin last weekend at PCS Open was driving the disc incredible in the final round but just had a lot of missed putts from inside the circle. So he really needs to fix that soon if he wants to have a chance to getting that lead card on the final round. Well he's made it here to the chase card today so certainly doing something right. Tell us about hole 3 Elias. Hole 3. This is the longest hole on the course and also the only par 5. You have a choice to make off the tee. You either have to be short of this OB area or clear it completely. If you want to clear it, you have to throw at least 120 meters in the air. I would expect most players to try to clear it on this card. If you are able to throw the perfect drive, then you really have a choice whether you want to go aggressive, even try to go for that elusive eagle free on this hole. Most players just settling for a long jump putt for their third shot and hopefully tapping for 
the easy birdie. It's a pretty, this hole really depends on the drive. If you get the perfect drive, it's pretty easy. But if you mess up on the drive and go OB, it's difficult to even save the par. And you see the sea of spectators. Incredible volume of people as Vino sneaks over the island and back inbounds on the other side. He has successfully crossed over on the first shot. Looked to be a little bit low, but very nice driven shot with that turning flight. He's in a good spot. We'll see Corey now try to match it. Corey with that signature shorter run up, only taking three steps. And this is fading to the crowd. If he's fortunate, that did cross on the other side of the OB area. But if not, he will have to take it way back and have a really difficult time getting the par. You mentioned the elusive eagle. I think Calvin, one of the players that could potentially be hunting that here. As we see him just smash this drive getting it turned over and then a huge fade out, even flipping the cameraman. Wow, that's one of the best drives I've ever seen on this hole and a great display of his controlled power with accuracy. Ezra as well now, going high left Anheuser. Great, great looking line here from Ezra. A bit safer than Calvin just holding that turn till the end. But yeah, talking about Calvin's drive, you could see that red 100 meter stake He's only got about 105 meters left. This is inside here from Corey. He needs to get through and he does. Wow. What a great shot. He's absolutely parked. Even after that OB able to save the birdie. So that's pretty much equal to an eagle, but just with the OB stroke gonna have a four. What a great save. Yeah, that was incredible. Really hit the low ceiling perfectly and skipped up to the basket. You see Ezra now playing it wider and lower, hoping for a skip up to the hill and then moving back towards the basket here. You can choose to play the inside entrance to the green along the fence or the right side and then try to get over the hill. We see Calvin from his huge drive just left with this approach now. And he's turned it over a bit too much. Firing OB long, that is the danger, in fact. On this 263 meter par five, Calvin has gone long OB in two throws. That is very impressive from Calvin, but also I'm sure he's a little bit bummed because that OB long is kind of the only mistake you don't want to make off the approach. Compared to, for example, Ezra here playing more safer approach with the second and just having an easy jump putt not even a jump but just a putt approach to get that easy birdie but Calvin here still to save the birdie and he does good putt there yeah we saw both Vino and Ezra simply lay up to the basket ensure that they are not bringing that danger into play and as Vino gets in his birdie as well very done clean very different paths to birdie. We see Vino connecting on the first three holes. Already three under for the round. And Corey and Calvin both doing it in three with a penalty stroke. Vino doing it in four with no penalty. And Ezra taking the par there. The birdie, rather, as we see a star frame here on hole three. Now we're moving into the woods for a few holes, starting on this 186 meter wooded par 4, a very common distance for this course. Off the tee you're trying to throw something straight with a good right finish. 
The more you can finish towards this right side road that is marking the OB on the right, the better. If you get the perfect drive, it's a pretty simple forehand approach. The fairway is sloping from right to left. The whole length of the fairway from T to green and especially at this green. So you want that disc to be fading towards the hill. A lot of rollaways to be seen on this hole. And uh, most players going forehand of the tee, some rollers also to be seen. Vino here opting, however, for the forehand, despite having a very good and accurate roller game. But he gets a nice flight, contends a little bit with that ceiling, catching some branches on his way, but still significant progress up the fairway. Corey also going to that, and he has gripped this a little bit wide, but just fading before the spectators. And that's a lot of distance there. A little bit left side on the hill, but no problems at all for Corey. Gets a full flight. Very fortunate break from Corey to get through all of the left side woods, and he's still going to have a chance for the birdie. Calvin here going a little bit inside with the forehand. Needs to keep going forward, and he's getting that roll away that I mentioned that we very often see after a tree hit on this hole. Being on that left side is much more difficult than being on the right side, so we'll have to see if he has any shot to the basket from there. Ezra pushing this one as well, using all of the height available to him, and he has smashed it right up there. I think he is left at about 75 or 80 meters, really shaping that one nicely through the gap. Vino up first on his approach to the green. But he's caught something along the way, pushing the nose up on his disc and finding the roll down the hill. Yeah, it's a sneaky low ceiling here because you're going slightly downhill initially. You see this shot from Calvin kept very low and what a perfect angle there. Flipping up the forehand perfectly under the ceiling and he's well in the circle there. Not many touch forehands we see from Calvin with those understable discs, but that was beautiful. Ezra as well navigating his way to the green nicely. Some good precision to hit the gap and match the slope of the hill. Corey here shaping his soft flex and right by Ezra's disc. Both of them will be at about five or six meters putting for birdie. We see Vino here with a beautiful touch approach. Yeah, well done there from Vino. Going with that, I believe that distortion from Prodigy. He really likes to throw that on those forehand approaches. And Calvin gets it to drop. Not a great putt there, hitting very low left side. But he's three under through four. Good start. We'll have both Corey and Ezra now putting from a similar location. A great birdie from Calvin to get us started. Corey jumps aboard. Says, I'll take my birdie as well. Ezra just needs to match that. And that's kind of what you want on this hole. It's another one of these holes on the front nine that you would really like to birdie. Pretty much the whole front nine on this course is... That is the stretch that you would like to get most of your birdies on. We see players being, you know, four, five, six, sometimes even seven under through the front nine. And uh, it's by far the easier of the two nines. So I'm sure this is the kind of start that all of these players were expecting and also hoping for. Another one of these very birdieable holes here on hole 5. Par 3, only 100 meters, even playing significantly downhill. And once again, this strong right to left slope is very much available on this hole. That is why most players are going with a forehand fading into the hillside, either with a slower approach disc that is still pretty overstable, or some people going with a slow fairway driver. 
important to land your disc in line or even a little bit right off the basket. And also important with the forehand line, as we see exactly that from Corey now, the height control underneath those left side branches. He hits the hill in an ideal spot and skips his way up to the basket. Very nice example of a safe and effective line with the forehand from Corey. Calvin looking like he has a fairway here in his hand, playing a little bit more with the stability, and he jumps the log smooth. What a great skip, but that is kind of what you see on this hole, you know, with that strong right to left heel side. You see those counter skips. And Ezra here going with something straighter, even getting a little bit of a flip up. But he has got some trees, but still well in the circle there. That is three great drives and Baino looking to match. a good height we'll see if it gets that forwards pushing skip that the others did as well coming up just a little bit more up the hill a more traditionally shaped skip but Vino up first now for his birdie still has a look as he'll try to connect on this one going downhill important that he catches chains or metal to not be left with a significant distance a critical moment for Vino Very nice. Powerful, powerful, confident putt there from Vaino. You can see he had no nerves there, or maybe he had some nerves and just covered it up very well with that sp smooth pin spinny stroke. And what? Corey hits oi, it in oi, the middle oi. of the basket. Does not get the result, though. That hurts my soul. I think he hit it straight on the pole. Look to have quite a lot of speed, but a very accurate putt. Ezra now hits that one as well, right in the heart. Solid birdie for him. Put together three in a row now. And Calvin as well, just absolutely parked it for his short tap in. Birdies for Vino, Calvin, and Ezra. Only Corey taking the par from that unfortunate circumstance. We move on. Moving on to another hole with the exact same distance of 100 meters. Hole 6 is a straight, conventional straight tunnel shot that we see a lot of in Finland. You have this tight gap at the end right here that we're flying through that really cuts down most of the slightly errant shots on this hole. But if you throw it perfect, you can pretty much throw as hard as you want to since there's this small hillside at the end of the fairway that will collect pretty much every perfect line shot. So Calvin here going even with the fairway driver on the short hole. Junk just hit it to the hillside but hits the late gap there on the right side and pretty much no look for birdie. Shouldn't be too much of a difficult par here. Wow, you see the touch on the hyzer angle from Ezra Significant hyzer release and getting it up to flat, puring the gap into the mulch. He has thrown another great shot. We see Vino here. Also using that under stability, although not as severe of a hyzer angle on his release. As a result, he turns it over a touch early to the right side gap. Right side entrance, rather, to that right late gap. He'll be left with a scramble to the basket. Corey with a beautiful piercing shot straight up there to just outside Bullseye. We got Calvin up first. This is a pretty safe putt to run with that uphill slope. Let's see if Calvin can give it a good run and he kind of does. Bad roll away though. He will have to work for the par even though he was well inside the Bullseye there. Still gonna have to make a circle's edge putt. Vino able to scramble out with the wide straddle, gives it the high any and just bouncing off metal. A really solid bid from a compromised location by Vino. And you mentioned it, but Calvin still with work to do for par. Yeah, healthy putt. 
Very well done. And that was an important part. You do not want to take a bogey on this hole. You do not want to take a bogey on any of the holes on the front nine. Especially after having that good start. Let's see if Ezra gets the birdie here. He's somebody that really loves to practice putting. Even uh, yesterday I saw him on the course after the round doing some putting. I feel like he's putting a lot of effort into it. And uh, it is showing so far that stroke is looking solid. And he's got his fourth birdie in a row here on hole six. Corey as well modulating the power on that putt a little bit. Coming out significantly softer than his putt on hole five. Just a short tap in and Vino there with the par. A great almost chance at birdie. He gave himself a shot and almost took it down. Moving on to another wooded par 4, hole 7, another one of these common distance of 180 meter par 4s. Off the drive you're going uphill, this time with a left to right sloping fairway, so important to get that right hand backhand hyzer release up the hill, also opening up the angle for the approach. You want to throw about 110 meters off the tee, and from there you have one of the touchiest approaches you're gonna find. Speed control is so crucial on this shot because you see that huge cliff on the right side of the basket. If you go over that edge you're likely to be either sliding or rolling down the hill left with sometimes no putt. Yeah a really thoughtfully designed hole. You see Ezra playing into the tunnel and getting a nice bounce off the roots of that left side tree. In, a, in the sweet spot. Corey has been shown the line. We'll see if he can match it. Looking really nice. Just a very nice flip up line. But connecting with the right side. Flipped it up a touch too much. And his distance is bitten off as a result. We'll still be left with a lot of work to the green. Yeah, that's a common result on this hole. The hillside is really pulling the discs to the right. You can see even Calvin missing the initial gap to the right, but gets a huge skip, fades back into the fairway. And that is just a perfect position. Let's see if Vaino can get into a similar position here. Yeah. Looks like he has thrown the perfectly clean shot down the middle. That is the perfect drive. Being on the left side also, might open up a bit more of a hyzer approach for him. Yeah, you, you do see a lot of players play the forehand approach because it shapes more naturally to the right, often what you need from the tee. So you see Corey slightly overturn that one. But the backhand really is the safest and most effective play, although you need to position yourself off the tee shot to allow for the backhand, try to fade away from that drop-off. Ezra looking to make that correction to Corey's shot that turned over a touch too much. Oh, and he just tries to hang on, goes off the edge, although with very little speed, may have sat down if he's lucky. Calvin here has the perfect position, and he's playing to the left side of the basket, which is ideal. You see that small trickle down towards the right, and he's just outside the bullseye. And as you said, Vaino going for this forehand, even more tricky with the speed control. If you fade at all too much with the forehand, you're going down the hill and he has just stopped in time. Well done there from Vaino. Yeah, and he is so much width and you see that it paid off really nicely. Corey from down the hill gives it a chance but goes by on the right side. As it's still him, these approaches really solid. And he bangs it in right on the pole. It's a very Corey Ellis putt right there. 
Very much so, and looks like Ezra even going over that edge of the green, still staying close. That is not a common result. Many times you see the discs sliding or rolling down the hill. But he gets another birdie, five in a row. He's on a roll right now. Gonna have a chance to shoot one of the Hodder front nines. Absolutely lighting it up. We see Vino get his birdie in here on seven. And Calvin as well left with this short putt. A lot of green on these guys' scorecards. You touched Elias on the fact that the front nine is the easier of the two nines. And statistically to maintain pace, they need as many birdies as they can get. And talking about birdies and getting birdies, that's the only thing you have to do on hole eight. It is probably the easiest hole on the course, only 78 meters, playing well uphill. And uh, even with the tough sloped green, this shot is such a simple, just an approach disc hyzer, overstable approach disc hyzer for these guys, that eight out of 10 times, they're not going to mess it up. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had a star frame here, because if you're not getting this hole, especially if you're on the chase guard, you're losing strokes to the field. Yeah, the two qualifying factors to give themselves a birdie look. One of them there is, is getting over the hay bales. Tough to see from that angle how much progress Ezra made. And the second one remaining at the top of the hill and near the basket. There is a drop off to the left and long. An incredible touch from Calvin, almost even hitting the leaner on the pole. Slides right past it. Absolutely parked for Calvin. Vino here. Vino just going pure standstill. He's known to have a very good control from that stance. And proves it there once again, only four meters away. That is what you want on this hole. And Corey, he's seen a couple of good shots there and a bit of an errant one from Ezra. Looks like he's going for the good shot as well. You see that sloped green. It's one of the more difficult greens on the course, so just telling how easy the shape of the drive is, even with that difficult green. And Ezra, surprisingly, opts to lay up and take the par on this hole. Corey bangs that one home. I do understand the decision. I mean, a lot of times players will think that their putt is the determining factor between the birdie or not. But Ezra recognizing that his tee shot was in fact the missing ingredient for the birdie does what he needs to do to avoid any damage done. And it's, uh, I think, a sign of a mature player there, able to recognize when the tee shot is simply not enough to attack it. Yeah, and I think Ezra also knows that he's got a decent start to the round. You know, he's, uh, pretty much everybody on the card is playing well right now. But Ezra not really losing any strokes with that 5 under through 8. In a rare moment where on our chase card all four players are tied at 20 under par. We move to hole 9 all tied up. Hole 9. These guys are likely not going to be taking this route that the drone is flying. It's par 303 meters. Most players are going forehand around the outside to the left of all of these birch trees. It's a very natural shape for the forehand. You just have to throw something either flat or on a slight hyzer. Keep it pretty low and moving to the right the entire way. You see a lot of skips at the end of the shot. So you want to leave your shot 15 to 10 meters left of the basket and a little bit short and take that skip. Hopefully find yourself inside the circle. Let's see if Calvin can do that. You really have to push the long side trees if you want to be parked. Kind of like Calvin is doing, he might be even going around them. And some scorching hot ground play. We saw that driver catch edge and spin out from behind the basket. He'll be left with a birdie putt. We see Vino if he makes any adjustment. No, just as low and unfortunately too low doesn't crest the hill, allowing him all that space for his disc to fly. 
just a foot higher and that's all the way down there. Corey going more inside and as a result contending with some of those trees will still be left with about 40 or 50 meters to the green. Ezra now. Good line from Ezra. Looks a little bit wide but he's got that big fade going around the outside of those trees. Some might call that a little bit lucky but you really see most of the discs that are heading towards the trees get through them. And he's parked Vano here, just a regular approach. It's a pretty disappointing par on this whole nine, but Vano, once again with a good front nine, he's probably just fine with being six under through nine. Corey with a huge putt. Going softly downhill, allowing him to get a bit more distance on that putt, but for most people, I think a throw. Calvin, good for the birdie putt there. Gives a wave to the crowd. Sneaks his way, at least for a short moment here, into the lead at 21 under on our chase card. Corey for his par now. Yeah, still a little bit of work left to do here. But you see, it's not really much wind to speak of right now. The conditions have been great as far as wind for the past three days no ex or past two days and no exception here on the third round just those small gusts sometimes but uh, mostly it's been kind of calm that's I feel like that's really the difficulty of this course is when it gets windy especially once we're moving to the open on the back nine the wind can be the determining factor between a good round and a bad round well, we see some good rounds here on our chase card. Ezra and Calvin ending at 21 under, Corey and Vino at 20 under, and you see where that leaves them currently. Anthony Barella in the solo lead at 23 under. Calvin and Ezra have tied themselves for second. Calvin with a seven down during this front nine. Ezra at six, they're both tied with Eagle. Corey and Vino tied in fifth place at 20 under. Our chase card is doing just that and putting the pressure onto our lead card an incredible front nine we appreciate you joining us here make sure to like comment and subscribe and if you're feeling extra supportive check out the patreon but more importantly make sure to catch us on the back nine <laughs>